Hi dears, today we will learn about the first chapter of Child Psychology. Unit 1 Child Development and Growth Human development is a lifelong process of physical, behavioral and emotional growth and change in the early stages of life from babyhood to childhood, childhood to adolescence and adolescence to adulthood, enormous changes take place. Crow and Crow observes that growth refers to structural and physiological changes while development refers to growth as well as changes in behavior. Which means growth implies an increase in size such as height and weight. But development is the product of psychological and social growth emphasized by environmental and individual behavioral factors. There are different types of development. Emotional development, social development, intellectual development, moral development and physical there are a few differences between growth and development. Let's see. First one is growth is quantitative and development is qualitative. Second difference, growth is not a continuous process. It ends while attaining maturity and development is a continuous process extending from womb to tom. The third difference is growth does not depend upon maturation or learning and development is possible without. Fourth difference is growth is structural and development is functional. The fifth difference is growth is purely physical sense and development is overall physical, mental, emotional, social, moral or any other. Then the sixth difference is growth is an external process and development is an internal process. Next we have to learn the principles of development. The first principle is growth and development follows a pattern or a sequence. Whether animal or human follows a pattern of development peculiar to it. All children follow a development pattern with one stage leading to the next. It can be seen in two directions, which is cephalocaudal sequence and proximodistal sequence. Cephalocaudal sequence describes the direction of growth and development. The child gains control of the head first, then the arms and then the legs. Infants develop control of the head and face. Next, they gain control over leg and able to crawl, stand, walk, run, jump, climb day by day. Is it clear? Next, proximo distal sequence. This also describes the direction of growth and development. The direction is center to outwards. Spinal cord develops first and then the other parts of the body. The second principle is growth and development is a continuous process. Which means from the conception to death leads child to be an adult. Adulthood changes to old age. Then comes the death which ends the life cycle. Now the third principle. Principle of individual differences. Which means rate and amount of growth is not same for all. Caused by both heredity and environment. Some children are more active while others are more passive in the same age. Some children will walk at 10 months while others walk a few months older at 18 months of age. Is it clear? Now the fourth principle is development proceed from simple to complex. Which means 
at first they are able to hold the big things by using their both arms and later they are able to hold the big things in a single hand when they able to hold a pencil they first draw circles then square then only letters and after that the words now the fifth principle principle of heredity and environment heredity means traits that are passed down from parents to their children biologically through genes environment every other factors except the hereditary factors now the sixth principle is principle of maturation and learning if a child is keen to learn something but lacks maturation then he will not able to learn it like 6 months old child cannot use language as the infant's brain has not yet attained the maturity level to talk now the seventh principle principle of significance of early development early childhood experiences have more impact on the development of the child these include nutritional emotional social and cultural experiences now the eighth principle is proceed from general to specific which means in all areas of development it proceeds from general to specific infant moves its whole body but incapable of making specific responses the ninth principle is growth and development is predictable which means it is possible for us to predict at an early age the range within which the mature development of the child is likely to fall now the last principle is principle of interrelation which means physical mental and social development are interrelated to each other each area of development is dependent on another and thus influences the other development is it clear my dears thank you